For the first time since 1970, the Detroit Pistons have the number one pick. And this is definitely a year where you will want to have the number one pick. There's a lot of talented prospects in this year's draft class, but there's one that stands out more than the rest. This is the time of the year where the NBA draft process really gets started. You have the NBA Combine, and you have agents setting individual workouts for selected teams. This is an amazing time of the year for basketball fans. The 2021 NBA playoffs have been amazing, and we can also start to envision the future stars in the league with this upcoming NBA draft. In this video, I will present you with my third mock draft for the 2021 NBA draft class. Even with the signing of Jeremy Grant last offseason, no reasonable fan expected the Detroit Pistons to seriously contend for a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. The front office came to the realization that buying out the rest of Blake Griffin's contract would benefit the team more by allowing the younger players on the team to get consistent playing time. Young studs Sadiq Bey and Isaiah Stewart both made the all-rookie teams and will be key pieces to the future of the franchise. And now the Pistons have the number one pick in this year's draft to be able to add the franchise player they need. This is not even a debate. This is a no-brainer. The draft will really start at number two. With the first pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Kay Cunningham from Oklahoma State University. He came into the season as the number one overall prospect and he ended the season as the number one overall prospect. This guy really doesn't have any weaknesses. Cunningham has a rare combination of size, versatility, skill level, and basketball IQ that every team looks for in their best player. He's a big guard standing around 6'7", 6'8", weighing around 225 pounds with a wingspan around 7 feet. He's able to control the pace of the game and plays well beyond his years. His court vision and decision making are elite, and he's got the handles and strength to get to his spots. Cunningham has a veteran presence about him and plays with great poise. The Pistons also drafted Killian Hayes last year, and he had a disappointing rookie season as he missed most of the year with an injury. Whether Hayes is still part of the future for the Pistons or not, Cunningham is the guy regardless. The Houston Rockets came into the season as somewhat of a title contender. With a trio of James Harden, John Wall, and Christian Wood, you could have convinced yourself that this team could make some noise if everyone was committed, but that was the problem. Once James Harden requested a trade before the season, that was almost a death sentence for the franchise this season. When Harden got traded in January and Christian Wood went down with a bad ankle injury, the Rockets went on a historic 20-game losing streak. But even though the Rockets finished with the worst record, you could feel good about the young talent on the roster, from Kevin Porter Jr. to KJ Martin to Jashon Tate. The Rockets didn't get the number one pick, but the good news is they did not lose their pick to OKC. The Rockets will still have a chance to get a game changer at number two. With the second pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Houston Rockets select Jalen Green. He is probably the most talented scorer in the draft. He is a jaw-dropping athlete. He has natural speed, quickness, and leaping ability that will leave you speechless. Jalen Green has ideal size at the position at 6'6", with at least a 40-inch vertical. He answered a lot of questions during the G League regular season with his poise, solid efficiency, and consistency. He has the physical tools to be a good defender, but that's still a work in progress. Green may not be a player who can naturally get his teammates involved, but just being a willing passer will be good enough. Make no mistake about it. His number one talent is getting buckets. Zach Levine is his greatest comparison in my opinion, who has become one of the best young scorers in the league. Jalen Green also has the talent and athleticism to be a big time scorer and an all-star. It seems that the Cleveland Cavaliers are going nowhere fast. You can tell by looking at Kevin Love's body language that he was as miserable as he's ever been in the NBA. And at this point, the only way the Cavaliers can get rid of him 
is if they buy him out because his trade value is at an all-time low, mostly because of the size of his contract. Colin Sexton had a very productive season as a scorer averaging around 24 points per game. But there are rumors that his teammates are frustrated with his style of play, and there are rumors that the team could look to trade him this offseason. The Cavaliers were once again bad on offense and bad on defense. Finding a prospect that can affect both ends will be a perfect prospect for them. And they have a chance to get that guy with this pick. With the third pick in the NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Evan Mobley from the University of Southern California. He will come into the league being a good defensive player with the potential to be one of the best defensive big men. At seven feet tall, he has an impressive combination of ball handling, shooting touch, and length. Mobley's wingspan reaches the 7'4". He is still Raw's offensive player right now, but he has the potential to be a solid offensive option in the future. Mobley is very unselfish and plays within the offense, but he can get a little too unselfish at times and not be aggressive offensively. Jerry Allen is a restricted free agent this summer, and I believe the Cavaliers want to keep him. I can see a front court of Allen and Mobley working together, but Mobley has to become consistent as an outside shooter to make it all work. The Toronto Raptors were the only team in the NBA that did not have a chance to play in front of their home crowd. The Raptors ended up playing in Tampa Bay, Florida for the whole season. There is no way that anybody could have predicted that the Raptors would finish 18 games under 500 and finish last in their division. But their reward for a tough season is the fourth overall pick. The last time the Raptors picked in the top five was 2011 when they selected Jonas Valanciunas fifth overall. It's expected that longtime point guard Kyle Lowry won't be back with the team especially after it looked like a foregone conclusion he would be traded before the trade deadline. The Raptors could look at guard with this pick. With the fourth pick in the draft, the Toronto Raptors select Jalen Suggs from Gonzaga University. Suggs is a combo guard who is a legit 3 and D player as soon as he steps on the court as a rookie. His basketball IQ is off the charts as he has a great understanding of the game for a young guard. Suggs has the ability to score off the dribble, score in the paint, and run an offense. He can put a ton of pressure on the defense with his transition game and open court ability. He plays with high intensity and competitive fire and is a true leader on the court. Plays tenacious defense and is very active on the defensive end. He simply plays to win the game. What better prospect to replace Kyle Lowry than Jalen Suggs? The Orlando Magic finished the season 21-51, which was the third worst record in the league. This team lost more games to play injury than anybody else, and it wasn't even close. In the last couple of years, the Magic have been able to scrap and claw their way to a seventh or eighth seed. Making the playoffs is always the goal, but it seemed that this team's talent level wasn't good enough to improve and compete for a higher seed in the Eastern Conference. Nobody wants to be stuck in no man's land and the Magic were definitely in it the last two years. The franchise decided before the trade deadline to go head first into tank mode. They parted ways with all-star center Nikola Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, and Evan Fournier. The Magic looked like a glorified G League team in the last month of the regular season. And the draft lottery didn't do the franchise any favors, but they still have two picks in the top eight. With the fifth pick in the NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Jonathan Kaminga. Of all the prospects in the top five, he definitely has the most question marks. Kaminga has good size, great athleticism and strength to be a two-way player on the next level. During the G League season, he did flash potential as an offensive creator, but he was inconsistent. Kaminga got off to a terrific start in the G League, but his play got worse as the season went along. His jump shot will have to get better. That's the key for anybody becoming a complete offensive player. He shot 39% from the field and 25% from three. But there's still a lot of upside with Kaminga. If he has a top-notch work ethic with his physical tools, 
I have no doubt he will become one of the best players in this draft class. The Oklahoma City Thunder probably has more first round picks in a seven year span than any other team in NBA history. Ever since OKC decided to trade Paul George to the Clippers, their mindset has been to get as many first round picks as possible. They recently just traded for Kimball Walker and also received the Celtics 16 pick in this year's draft. At some point, this team will have to package a lot of these picks for actual players. There's no way you can add around three first round picks every year. There's only 15 active roster spots in the NBA. Eventually, OKC will have to do something significant with some of these draft picks. Drafting for position should not be the team's mindset. Just draft the best talent available. With the sixth pick in the draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Scotty Barnes from Florida State University. Barnes is a do-it-all type of forward. He has tremendous size and length, standing 6'8", 230 pounds, with around a 7'3 wingspan. He has great confidence with the ball in his hands, and he was a great playmaker at Florida State as he did a good job reading the defense and making good passes to the open man, and he loved to attack the basket. With this size and athleticism, he can finish through contact with ease. His defensive potential is a huge selling point as a prospect. He has the physical tools to match up against offensive players at multiple positions and shows good instincts forcing turnovers. He doesn't mind doing the dirty work on defense, but his weakness is his outside shooting. In his freshman season, he struggled from beyond the arc and at the free throw line. Scotty Barnes reminds a lot of NBA scouts of Draymond Green. Even though you can argue that Steph Curry had his best regular season of his career, it still wasn't good enough to lead the Golden State Warriors to the playoffs. And again, for the second year in a row, they have a top 10 pick. For a team that has aspiration for competing for a championship, trading their two lottery picks for veteran players would be ideal. I have no doubts that the Warriors front office will explore the possibility of trading one of their picks and possibly one of their young players. Over the last two seasons, a lot of young players on the team have shown steady improvements and could be the players the Warriors have to rely on this upcoming season. If the Warriors do decide to keep this pick, drafting a player that's NBA ready with also potential to get better will be the combination the Warriors need with this pick. With the seventh pick in the draft, the Golden State Warriors select Davion Mitchell from Baylor University. Mitchell is no doubt NBA ready. Even though he's already 22 years old and around 6 feet 1, he has the skill level and the intangibles to make up for. In college, they call Mitchell off night because whoever he was guarding that night will have an off night on offense. He's an elite lockdown defender, an absolute menace. He loves to play defense. He embraces it. On offense, he has the quickness and the burst to attack the lane relentlessly. He also has a respectable outside jump shot to keep the defense honest. He made great improvements as a jump shooter from his junior year to his senior year. He must continue that improvement to be consistent on the next level. Golden State is trying to compete for championships. What better prospect to draft than a player like Davion Mitchell who experienced championship success in college? With the eighth pick in the draft, the Orlando Magic select James Booknight from the University of Connecticut. I believe Booknight's talent level is definitely worthy of this spot in the draft. This guy has just as much upside as anybody after the top five in my opinion. The Magic needs offense in the worst way, and Booknight can get buckets in his sleep. He has the handles, the shiftiness, and the range to be an elite score on the next level. A definite three-level score. He didn't shoot as efficiently as you would like in the sophomore year, but he did have surgery on his elbow that caused him to miss some time. Booknight is a very explosive athlete with a lot of natural ability. He's a Jordan Clarkson type. He's not a natural playmaker. His mindset is to put the ball in the hole. Let players like Markel Fultz or Cole Anthony run the offense, while Booknight can focus strictly on getting buckets. It was another losing season for the Sacramento Kings making it 15 years since their last playoff appearance. That's currently the longest active streak in the league. 
The Kings were mediocre at best this season. De'Aaron Fox and rookie Tyrese Halliburton were the main bright spots for the Kings, and the future looks very bright for those two in the backcourt. But for the third year in a row, their second overall pick Marvin Bagley dealt with injuries as he missed half the season. At this point, it would be better for the team not to trade him this offseason because his trade value is very low. After the Kings secured their backcourt of the future with Halliburton and Fox, they might look at the forward position or the center position with this pick. With the ninth pick in the draft, the Sacramento Kings select Franz Wagner from the University of Michigan. The younger brother of current NBA player Mo Wagner has an all-around skill set. He might not have an elite skill, but he does a lot of things very well. He has a good handle, good shooting stroke, is a good playmaker, and competes on the defensive end. He also has good size for a small forward at 6'9". Wagner would be an easy fit for any team with his versatile skill set. With the addition of Franz Wagner, the Kings will be building a nice young core of guys who knows how to play the game and is unselfish. It's already been a chaotic offseason for the New Orleans Pelicans. They fired head coach Stan Van Gundy after just one year, and there is a story that some family members of Zion Williamson want him to lead the franchise. There was already speculation that Zion could have his heart set on the New York Knicks. After Chris Paul and Anthony Davis left the franchise, there has to be fear that the current franchise player could end up doing the same thing. And add to the fact that the franchise is only committed to the lease in New Orleans through 2024. So the Pelicans might not even be in Louisiana that much longer. That's why this offseason is very important. Progress has to be made for this team. Outside shooting and defense were the two issues with the team last season. They need to address at least one of those areas with this pick. With the 10th pick in the draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Moses Moody from the University of Arkansas. The Pelicans need outside shooting, and Moody can provide that. He has the game to take this offense to the next level. He averaged around 17 points in his freshman season, mostly as a spot-up jump shooter. But he did show signs he could be more than that on offense in the future. Moody has excellent size at 6'6", and has a massive wingspan for a guard at around 7'1". Pelicans will be lucky to get their hands on this guy who could end up being the best shooter in the class. And he lacks the explosiveness you need to consistently get by your opponents off the dribble. But his length allows him to play the passing lanes well and has a chance to be a plus defender with more time. With the addition of the rookie of the year LaMelo Ball, there was a different vibe with the Charlotte Hornets this past season. The unselfishness of their new franchise player seemed to put some extra pep in the step of his teammates and his style of play made the Hornets one of the most exciting teams in the league. You could say that the Hornets were everybody's league pass team. They were on track to make the playoffs, but just fell short at the end in the play-in tournament. There is a need at the center position, but I could see the Hornets going in a number of directions with this pick. With Devontae Graham and Malik Monk becoming free agents, they could draft a guard. With Gordon Hayward having injury issues, they could go forward. And their center position has been their weakest link for a while now. With the 11th pick in the draft, the Charlotte Hornets select Keon Johnson from the University of Tennessee. Along with Jalen Green, Johnson is one of the best athletes in this draft. He plays extremely hard and is an impressive defender. He is tenacious and disruptive and very active on defense, and he can develop into a lockdown defender. Johnson is an excellent run and jump athlete who plays mostly off the ball. Offensively, he's looking for cutting lanes to the basket and attacking closeouts. Johnson has a good feel for the game and is a willing passer. He made some improvements as a he made some improvements as an offensive player throughout his freshman season but his outside shooting is definitely his biggest weakness. LaMelo Ball could give Johnson a lot of easy buckets at the basket with his activity on offense, but his defense and athleticism is his calling card. After LaMarcus Aldridge got bought out and eventually retired, and with DeMar DeRozan becoming a free agent, 
it's safe to say that the San Antonio Spurs are rebuilding, which is the right move. You're only going to go so far with DeRozan as your best player. The Spurs this past season were not great on offense or defense. They were 19th in points per game and 20th in opponent's points per game. And they ranked dead last in three-pointers attempted and three-pointers made. The Spurs might not have a star player at the moment, but they have a lot of nice young pieces. I don't expect them to truly compete for a playoff spot next season with all the young players on the team. And the veteran players like DeRozan and Patty Mills are most likely not coming back. The Spurs could use another big man, and they have a chance to take a potentially great prospect at center. With the 12th pick in the draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Afrinan Shangun from Turkey, probably the best offensive big man in the draft. He's the absolute magician in the low post. Shangun has a very soft touch around the basket and has amazing footwork. His scoring around the basket and rebounding reminds a lot of scouts of Nikola Jokic. He has not consistently proven he can be a legit three-point shooter at the moment, but he has shot around 80% from the free throw line this season. I'm confident he will eventually stretch his range beyond the three-point line with more time. His biggest weakness is his defense. Shane Goon is a very good, at least average on that end, will be good enough because of his potential as an offensive player. The Indiana Pacers dealt with a lot of issues during this past season. Not only were the coaches and players not on the same page, but the coaching staff itself weren't on the same page. The Pacers dealt with injuries to two starters in TJ Warren and Miles Turner, and they also decided to trade their former All-Star Victor Oladipo. With all of that happening for the Pacers, there was no way they could reach their potential this season. I believe it was quite an accomplishment that the Pacers even got to the play-in tournament. And given how much Oladipo has regressed over the years, Karis LeVert is clearly the better player and has put the team in a better position going forward. Not long after they were eliminated in the play-in tournament, the Pacers fired head coach Nate Bjorken, which caught no one by surprise. The Pacers have a lot of good big men on the roster, so they could be looking at the guard position or the forward position with this pick. With the 13th pick in the draft, the Indiana Pacers select Josh Giddy from Australia. Giddy could be one of the best playmakers in this draft. He has a unique ability to find his teammates in the right spot, and with his height at 6'8", there's almost no passing angle he would miss. Giddy makes the impossible possible when it comes to passing. His overall feel for the game is very impressive for an 18-year-old. He controls the pace of the game and never seems to be rushed or in a hurry. Giddy ended the season with 13 double-doubles and three triple-doubles. But he did struggle as an outside shooter as he shot only 29% from three. He has somewhat of a slow shot release and will need to speed that up to excel on the next level. His overall defense will need big improvements, both on the ball and off the ball. But his size with his passing ability is too good to pass up for the Indiana Pacers. With the 14th pick in the draft, the Golden State Warriors select Corey Kisper from Gonzaga University. He may have ended his season with a bad performance in the Final Four, but he's still looked at as one of the best shooters in the draft. Kisper is a four-year player from a top-notch program at Gonzaga. He knows how to play the game and has experience playing unselfish basketball. He would be a great fit with the Warriors. Kisper is also a good finisher in transition and can run the pick and roll very well. You can never have too much shooting. And Kisper's presence on the court could make life a lot easier for Steph Curry. Kisper shot 44% from three in his senior year and 41% in his college career. He's a good decision maker and knows his role. 